Hi, everyone. Let's keep talking about symbiosis, okay? Let's hopefully get better. I know this is just day two, okay? So we're going to look at some examples here, and you're going to determine, do you think it's sim uh, what type of symbiosis it is? Okay, mutualism, parasitism, or is it commensalism? Okay, so let's think. We've got an ostrich and a gazelle. Okay. We're telling you their relationships. So the ostrich and gazelle, they feed next to each other. They both watch for predators and they alert each other to danger. Since the visual abilities of the two species are different, they each can identify threats that the other animal may not see. Okay, is this mutualism, meaning they're both benefiting? The ostrich gets something from the gazelle. The gazelle gets something from the ostrich. Is it commensalism? One animal's getting something, but the other one's not hurt and it's not harmed. Or is one animal getting something and the other is hurt? Then it's parasitism. So read that again and think in your head, is it mutualism, commensalism, or parasitism. All right, and an ostrich and gazelle is mutualism. They're both benefiting from each other, okay? Okay, let's try this one. We've got yucca flowers and yucca moss. That's how to, hard to see the moth there, right? It's camouflaging with the beautiful flower. Let's look at their relationship. Yucca flowers are pollinated, meaning, ladies and gents, that flower is able to reproduce more flowers because of the moth, okay? So the flower is getting something. The moth lays their eggs in the flower where that larva then hatches and eats some of the seeds. The moths then fly and distribute means to move the seeds all over. So you got to ask yourself, is the flower getting something from the moth? Yes, it is, right? They're getting pollinated. Is the moth getting something from the flower? Yes, right? A, plate, a home, basically, a place to lay their eggs. And then it also gets some seeds, food for them. So is it mutualism, commensalism? or parasitism. It is mutualism, mutualism, okay? Let's try a hermit crab. Hmm, let's look at this relationship. Hermit crabs live in the shells made and then abandoned by the snails. Okay, let, let me explain this one. So a snail then leaves, leaves its shell behind, okay? The hermit crab then notices that and then lives in that shell that the snail left behind. So the snail already left. It's not affected by the crab. The crab then gets a home from the snail, right? So is that mutualism? They both benefit. Commensalism. One gets something positive from the other, and the other one's not hurt, not um, harmed, but it's also not benefiting. Or is it parasitism? One is harm from it. Think about this one. And it is commensalism. Commensalism. The snail is not being affected by the crab. The snail already left, right? All right, let's look at this one. A whale and their barnacles. These are barnacles up close right here. Oh, let's see this relationship. Barnacles create their home by attaching themselves to the whales. Okay, so the barnacles get a home. That's positive, right? They're getting something positive from the whale. The whales are not harmed by this. So the whales then have barnacles on them, okay? It doesn't say in the text that the barnacles are hurting them, and it doesn't say the whales are getting anything from the 